Yeah. Hello guys, I hope you're well. So far we've been working on a cylinder. So that tuto those tutorials will help us now learn how to create a fiber mechanism. So we are also going to learn a new method of creating primitive shapes. But for you to create a primitive shape, you need one, you need origin point and direction, and also you need the body. Now we want to create a crank rocker mechanism, a fiber mechanism. So usually we have the fixed bar and then usually you have the crank QP which is 80 millimeters in this case and then we have the rocker 300 and we have the coupler QR. So this one obeys Grashof law or rule. Therefore this is what we want to take care of. So we'll have points 1, 2, 3 and 4 like that. 1, 2, uh, point 0 sorry, 0, 1, two and three like that now so let's start so first of all you come here we need four points so you start with four points you don't need to come by the way you don't need to come here and right click here you can just come here click so you need four points so we need one two, uh, sorry and then another point two like that so we need how many points point zero one two three and four Yes, yeah, so we need those points. So then we say cancel there. Now we need now to change this this position. So I want my FOBA mechanism. I want it to lie on. I want it to lie on the ZX plane. Therefore, point zero. Let it remain where it is. Now we need to move point one to the top. Remember, we remember we said that Q is one. Now we come. We move it. So I need it to go up because it's 80 millimeters so in the z direction it goes to 80 like that and now once you come here and click like that you'll see the the, the visualization then we have point 0.2 point 0.2 it will go 400 so it will go 400 in the x direction so we have the x direction 400 like that and now in if we want to see where it is, now we can see where it is. It's here. And now we have our point 0.3. Our point 0.3 will go, will go now up from here. It will go up. It will go up by 300. So it will be in the X. We, we, put, we put slightly bigger because as you can see, just slightly. We don't know this length. So just slightly bigger. We can put maybe around 600. We can put maybe around 600. Or 500 like that so you can put in the x direction 500 and then in the z direction we can put going up by 300 now in doing that if you come and click this so you already have something here as you can see we have something now for us for us to create a cylinder here or a graphic we need a body and as you can see, when you come to the body, you only have one body, the ground body. Now, there is, we need to create a body, center of mass between all these points. So you have point 0, 1, and then point 2 and 3, and also 1 and 3. Therefore, you can come and create a body. You don't need to put any equation. You come, click vector, like that, and then we, need, we want to create another point here. So click that point. We, dub, we double click as usual. So point 0, and also the other one is point one like that and then create point as you can see we have a point in between there and that is point four if you click point four you see the coordinates are highlighted in blue and it's at the midpoint remember this is 80 now we come again here click just the vector like that and then now we do the, the same one for point two and three so let's do point two and point three and then we say create points and also for point one and three just click this we come to one like that create points like that so we have these other we have all these points now that means for point four five and six they are in between the linkages now we come here to the ground body we come here we add body we need three bodies we need a body for this for the crank the coupler and also the rocker so right click add body so you need body one so for body one let's call it the crank so that 
we remember apply for body 2 now for the coupler so that it's easier okay apply and then the other one is rocker so that we remember say okay so we have those four bodies now we need now to for you to put these bodies inside here all of them are here in the global as you can see now you come to the first body crank the crank is here so come to cm coordinates like that use center of mass and then the origin point we take it as 0.4 because 0.4 is the one as you can see now it has changed now the other one if you don't remember the point you can come and see 0.5 which is 0 0.5 0 0.5 is in the rocker so the next one but for the coupler is 0 0.6 so come here the coupler cm coordinates and then we take 0 0.6 double click 0 0.6 like that and now the last one is for the rocker cm coordinates point 0 0.5 like that now all the points are there now the next thing that we have to do now is to add our graphics you don't need to come again no you, you need to come here we add our graphics we, we must add our graphics from here so right click there so we need our first cylinder so let's call it the crank like that crank apply and then we need our second one so our second one you can put it as the coupler apply and then we also have the other one as the rocker so that you just remember it's good for purposes of remembering now we start with the crank the crank the parent body you see now for the body you need to select you need a body also and also you need an origin point which is point zero and the direction point is point one like that and then you leave it the rest you leave them as by default because these are huge dimensions now the coupler we do the same thing parent body the coupler it's very easy when you 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 number so we need we know it's point one the other one to point number three like that now you can see now everything is starting to fall in place now the other one the rocker come here that's the body and then the origin is point number two and then the direction is point number three like that and now we can save this model crank rocker save like that now for us to we need some motion we need a revolute joint here on the the input motion is here therefore you need to create joints now for for it to to be to not to have any redundant forces the degrees of freedom must be equal to zero for, so in short for any kinematic analysis we need the dof to be equal to zero but if you come to tools and then we check model you'll see that degrees of freedom is 18 therefore we need to add some revolute joints so come here we need how many joints we one two three and four we can put four revolute joints and then we see what happens so we need how many joints so we need one joint one joint two joint three like that and then let's say joint four and then we see what happens so now we have these joints so we come and in we have to put our we have to change it now to revolve joint so joint one is there now we need to put our bodies here so we put body so you put ground with respect to the crank like that and now you can see the origin point is point zero and now you can see it there and then the axis as usual we put global y like that now we go now to the second joint joint two we don't need ball joint i know we did not change that but now you can do that you can put like this but it's not compliant i don't know why it's not we've not checked compliancy so let's see if it will affect anything so the next is the crank with respect to the coupler is the the joint should be here this 
body with respect to this one. That's why we are putting like that. Body one is the crank, body two is the coupler, and then the origin point is point one. So I'm going to do this really, really fast. Like that. So let's, I'm going to do the other ones fast as I can. Like that. Now the next thing that we have to do now is to check if it's the model is okay. We check the model. So we remember we had 18 degrees of freedom. I want to see. As you can see, we have minus two. That means it's redundant. There are redundant constraints here. Now, for instance, let us see. Let's come and put some motion here. One, we have to put some input motion here so that we can animate. Now we add motion, we add motion like that. So we say okay. And then here on joint, and then we say it's joint one, joint zero, sorry. And then it's displacement like that. And then properties, we come here, we put expression one times time like that. And then here on joint initial conditions, we need to put something like 15 radians per second, like that. And then we save our model. So now once we have our motions like that, once we have our motions like that, we come and check the model. And then we see the if we have the degrees of freedom. Now for you to remove these redundant constraints, because you'll get warnings. Now the first thing that you need to do, we need we can change one of the joints. We change one of the joints now let's take joint two go to joint two now instead of putting it as a revolute joint we can put it in line joint like that and then let it remain at point one like that and then here we put axis and then here we, li we leave it at global y and then we come here and check model now it's okay as you can see it's okay now there is no negative forces there is no negative dof sorry and now we come here to the run we run it you will see that we will not have any errors analysis of the model is complete now it's okay and now we close this this and then we come now to animate We need to animate again. Can come to animate. Let me see if I can animate this. Now, as you can see, it's a crank rocker mechanism. It's a crank rocker mechanism. So let's stop this animation. We come back here. And then we animate so we refresh this and then now we play now it's a crank rocker mechanism and as you can see we can actually make it bigger like that and then in the zx plane like that this one is rocking this one is inputting the motion like that so this is a demonstration of an overly constrained fiber mechanism or a mechanism which is overly constrained so this is the cylinder that we worked on as the simple pendulum and as you can see I have these points so i renamed point 0 to point a and point 1 to point c and then i changed some of the coordinates so this is how i did it these are the coordinates that i used so you can come here to data summary. So for practice, you can use this. These are the coordinates that I used. And you can remember point, point 0.2, the middle point, this one here, had an expression. So it's OK. So it was taking just the midpoint between these two. And like that. So I remained the same. And also, you'll find that I added two bodies using the vector method that I demonstrated. 
on the fober mechanism, the crank rocker mechanism still in this video. So the other things that I added is motion. So I added the motion here, but I did not remove the motion of the simple pendulum. It's still there. So I added this motion and the expression is this, just the same as in the fober mechanism. I also added four joints. So joint zero, as you can see, the original one, then joint one here, and then joint two, and then joint three. So we want to see how it behaves once we simulate it. Now we can come here and check the tools, check the model. So the DOF, you'll see it's minus four. So this is due to the over constraint here. So let's simulate this and then we see what happens. So we can leave it like that. So joint two references the same. Okay, so there are some errors. So let me check how I can fix this. So we can see that the error is joint two and a model references for the same for body one and body two. So let's come to joint two and then we see what, where the error is. Ah, you can see now body one and body two. So you need to change this. So joint two is where this is joint two. So we need to put the other body. So we need to put body zero. So this is body zero, like that, so that it references this body and this body. So body zero, so this is body zero. Remember we have our free body part, so body zero is this and body one is this. So it has to be between the two. Now we can come and try to run this model. So you want to see it's overly constrained. So this is an example of what will happen if you have an over constrained if you have an over constrained mechanism so let's see you can see how it's behaving you can see it's overly constrained so it's not going as in as intended so we just stop it we come back here so we remove all the redundant forces or all the over constraints so as we did we have to change this you can change this joint Joint two to inline, like that. Start point E, axis, global Y. So that one is okay. And then we come here and check model. So it's still minus one. So this is due to the motion. So you don't need a motion here. You see this is the coupler. No, this is the crank. So this is the coupler and then this is the rocker. So you don't need a motion here. The motion for this is input from here. So we just come here, remove this motion, motion zero. We deactivate or we delete. So you can delete it or deactivate it. So like that. And now once we come here, we check model. Now I believe everything is okay. Zero, so it's okay. So now we come here and we run. So now we say animate, refresh, and now we see what happens. Now it's okay. As you can see, now it's working fine. Yeah. So in the this video will be a bit long. So we want to to continue with the other project for the crank crank rocker mechanism in which we define the output motions. Yeah. Now we want to define the output motions for the cranker for the crank rocker mechanism so we go and open our model like this and then crank rocker so this is the model that we created so you come here now we have our motion so we need to, to define an output request so right click add output and then here you can come here and then you say displacement and then entity and then we want which body with reference to the global frame. The global frame is here. So we can say this body, the coupler. So you can see why we need the coupler. So we want to see the displacement. So we say both here. And then we come here to run. And then we say run. Like that. We close. And then you come here, you plot. And then we say body, we don't need marker dis displacement. 
we say body and then you can say coupler and then we see if we can plot something here so this is the displacement along the y but it's not good for the y so you can come here and plot along the z because the z is what we want yes now this is what we want now this is the motion so let's animate it as you can see so this is the motion so you can come here and then we can animate and then we see if they rhyme together in the y-axis there is there's no displacement so let's go back to zero there so as you can see the body goes all the way minus like that like that it's going down and then going up again so that's the motion that's how you create a an output request so you can come and change anything that you want in the output so you can come to the output here you can even add another output or you can change so maybe you can say velocity and then we say we can say run we run it again and then we see if there is anything that you can plot so we close and then we say plot and then we say body and then we say coupler and then we say but then this other one did we say coupler or we said i don't know so we say z yeah this now this is the body this is not the velocity so let's say velocity on coupler and then vz we apply we see yeah so this is the velocity so this is the velocity the red one is the velocity now that's what you do but if you have specific if you have specific output request that you want now you can you can specify something like talk if you want to do something like talk so this is how you do it so now for this fober mechanism what you want to do is to put an output request for the talk so this is what you do you come to the project let us delete this output so we delete this one okay and now we want to add another output so you right click add an output like that now in this output we come instead of displacement here we use expressions and then here you come here at f1 uh, f2 sorry you click fx and then in between here you put your cursor in between there like that and then now you come to the force tab and then you click motion and then here and once you click motion go to properties and then once you go to properties you go now to the motion the motion where is motion do we have a motion here yes motion and then you remember motion zero we deactivated it remember that we deactivated it so we we are doing we are using motion one so once you hit string then you say add like that and then here we come and add the following numbers zero seven zero so these numbers the first zero it represents the it's a j flag if you have a reference with respect to i marker and j marker and all now for seven seven brings up the output for the talk and then zero is the global reference and then you click evaluated so it should look something like that and then you say okay like that and then now you come and run the simulation you run the simulation so you run it like that now we say close close like that and now we come to plot so once we click plot so we can deactivate all these plots we don't want that curve we also don't want this curve we don't want this curve here so we say stop like that and now otherwise we also have the option of creating another of loading another file like that so once we come here expressions and then from the expression is output one as you can see and then you come to f2 and then we say apply now you see this the this is the talk for the five seconds now once you click play so that is the talk now for us to know the maximum talk 
you click this statistics bar and then once you come to the statistics bar click this icon here and now the maximum torque is my one point that is around power two so that is 144.58 newton meters that is the maximum torque even you have the mean here and everything so that marks the end of this video yeah thank you for for those who are watching thank you for the new subscribers